Check. Five, four, three, two, one. You know what? I think you could probably make an iPod from scratch. I mean, just break it down into its component parts. It's sort of carve the shape out of some clay and bake it in the oven. It forms a buck, which is a positive mold used for vacuum forming. Get a vacuum forming bed out of um, a vacuum cleaner for your house and a shop light with a heating lamp in it. Put the heating lamp over the vacuum in a piece of Tupperware and put a piece of thin acrylic over the top. Your buck that you made out of clay underneath it, suck the plastic down around it. A plastic part out of acrylic, and that could be the faceplate and the back of the iPod. Take those parts and then cut out the holes that you need. You could use a desktop uh, laser cutter, a Dremel tool, a sufficiently sharp hobby knife. Take those parts and set them to the side for now. First, you're gonna need some circuit layout software. You can find this for free online. You could probably get away with running an MP3, MP4, iPod style player with uh, TI OMAP 3503 or comparable ARM Cortex uh, processor. Look up the data sheet for that processor, find out the footprint, find out the suggested circuit layout. Lay that out in some freeware circuit design software, lay out the board, generate Gerber files, send those off to a company that does prototyping. For not too much money, you can get a couple copies of that board back. Now you're gonna to need to populate the part. <clears throat> DigiKey, Mauser, Future, get some solder paste, and you're gonna take a toothpick and carefully apply solder paste to each of the pads on the board. With tweezers, populate each of the parts on the board. Now you're gonna need a toaster up, a cheap one from Walmart, and put your board in there. Carefully control the heat over time so that you can reflow all the parts onto the board. You'll need an LCD screen, eBay, or Alibaba.com from China. Uh, you'll also need a lithium polymer battery and a charge controller for that. So you can find those in basically the same place as the LCD screen. I guarantee you there's an open source Linux distribution designed to run on those ARM Cortex chips. So find that and get that uploaded onto your board so that you're actually running an operating system. From there, creating a media player isn't that difficult. You have a functioning MP3 player and you have the plastic parts for the front, stick them together. To get that same sheen as the iPod has, you may have to paint the inside of a clear acrylic part with uh, hobby paint so that from the front it has that iridescent. But then again, I pretty much just made that whole thing up. We're used to these products now that are so incredibly well designed and manufactured to such tight tolerances that we don't really think of them in terms of their component parts. It's difficult. Uh, they're sold to us as beautiful and unique objects, which is great. Uh, I like a good product as much as the next person, but it does make it difficult to think practically about what these things are that we're buying. and. Uh, how we might hack into them and make them better. The fact of the matter is, there's this period of history that's just coming to an end where we had products in our homes that were made out of materials that we didn't have the tools to work with. For ages, things were made out of stone or clay or metals, and we generally could get a hold of, say, a furnace or a torch or shears to work with those materials. During the First World War, we developed a lot of petroleum-based plastics. You need special tools to work with plastic, and we were suddenly inundated with products that were made out of a material that we couldn't replicate in our own homes. Now, there are all kinds of tools available to the average tinker. Look at 3D printing, things like the MakerBot, the Form 1, the RepRap. Zen Toolworks has an incredible desktop CNC milling machine that can also do 3D printing. Heck, desktop inkjet printers haven't been around all that long. Epilog desktop laser cutters free to use design tools, Trimble SketchUp, circuit board layout tools, all sorts of open source circuit design. I mean, this is just a really exciting time to be making stuff and that's what the show is about. Take you from an idea into the design into actually building things. Because I think that it's really important to be able to use these tools that we have now and be able to make our own stuff that's really unique and cool and will really uh, all benefit from being hacker. You know, for the first time in history, I could have all the tools in my own house that I need to map almost all the major corporations. I can't manufacture things at the same rate, but I can build all the same stuff. Yeah, yeah. Who are you again? My name's Nick. I work for an electronics company during the day where I write catalog content and do technology demonstrations and help manage a huge catalog of hobby electronics parts. In my free time, I make stuff, and I've been making stuff my whole life. I can't settle on one hobby. 
paint, draw, sewing, fashion design, woodworking, some metal casting, cooking, uh, electronics design, circuit board layout, uh, architecture and home design. I made cigar box guitars for a while, African hand drums, robotics, software. Every now and then I just get an idea in my head and I need to hold that idea in my hand. There's a process there. There are people who haven't really fleshed out that process. The trick is to have this catalog of tools and materials and processes that you can draw from and sort of intermingle things to uh, get the results that you're looking for. It's not an easy process to explain, but then again, we have an entire series of videos to do that. I teach physical computing classes um, for the company that I work for, and I also uh, create educational materials in my spare time. Uh, I'm gonna show you some of the projects that I've done in the past and maybe do some teardowns there and show you uh, the learning process and the build process was to get from an idea to that finished thing. I'll do some educational videos just kind of explaining basic concepts of electronics or programming or fabrication. What I'm really excited about is coming to you guys and saying, hey, I've got an idea. Brainstorming that idea in front of you on camera let you get inside my head and show you the process that I use uh, to get things out of my head and into my hand. The initial uh, napkin schematics to sourcing parts, uh, to actual fabrication, programming, um, how I create these things. I'm gonna try to organize the videos in a way that isn't project-based, but process-based. So if I'm building something that involves um, fiberglass, and uh, circuit board layout and um, power supply design, then I'm gonna try to lay out the videos in such a way so that it's easy to find them based on those search criteria. So instead of saying, gee, I want a video of somebody building this specific thing, I need a video on how to do fiberglass or I need a video on how to design a power supply. And that way, I'll be doing a, a project over the course of these videos that's cohesive across the series, um, but you'll be able to pick up the, the skills and the materials knowledge. I think we're all gonna learn something that way. As I mentioned earlier, this video is a supplement to my blog at www.fringeengineering.com. You can check out the educational materials there, as well as some of the projects that I'm working on. I'll try to keep the blog updated with the video, so that I can publish schematics and uh, lay out and design files for you. Everything I do in the show will be open source and I'll try to get as many source materials to you guys as possible. If you wanna copy my project or if you want to um, alter it or um, if you wanna manufacture it and monetize it in some way, that's totally cool, completely open source. Thanks for watching, you know, uh, rate, subscribe, read the blog at www.fringeengineering.com. See you guys later.